Hello, uh, welcome to our segment on miracle stories. And today I have Donna Whittington here to share her miracle story. But before she does, let's open with a word of prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we just come before you and we thank you, Lord, that you are a God of miracles and that you are still alive and working in our lives. And those miracles may be big, they may be small, but you are still working in all of them. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise for that. Just be with us now as Donna shares her wonderful story. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Donna, well, if you'd like to share your story, we'd love to hear it. Uh, thanks for having me here, Jody. Um, especially this time of the year, it's almost July, and our miracle happened at the time of Nathaniel's birth and his birthday is July 14th. So that is just around the corner. And every year at this time, I just really reflect on what happened uh, during his birth and how thankful I am that God was with us in a most powerful way at that moment. To give you a little bit of history, uh, many people here in the church know Mike and myself and our family, we have two children, uh, our daughter, Lindsay, and then of course our son, Nathaniel. Uh, Lindsay is the oldest. She was born in 1994. And then with her, the pregnancy with her was completely normal, no problems, um, you know, so expected no issues during her birth, and that was the case. Uh, she was a healthy baby, healthy delivery, but it was a quick one, uh, which is not uncommon with other females in our family as she was born in about five hours for a first one. And so I do remember when I left the hospital with her, the nurse told us, she said, well, if you have a second one, you better be really close to the hospital. I didn't really think too much about that at the time, just kind of laughed, you know, and on we went home. So um, when Nathaniel was born, he was born July 14th, 1998. And his, uh, throughout most of the pregnancy, it was normal, you know, with him, um, until I hit about 31 weeks. And then when I made it to about 31 weeks along in the pregnancy, I did end up in the hospital in preterm labor. Um, so that was a surprise for myself uh, and for Mike, uh, but he was, the baby, he was still fine. Uh, they did keep me, they were preparing to transfer me because when Nathaniel was born, it was the old Marion Memorial Hospital. And that was even before they added the obstetrics wing. So we were in the old hospital, second floor OB. So there was no advanced care for babies if there was a problem. So they were in the process of getting ready to transfer me to another hospital, probably Carbondale. Um, just depending if they could get the labor stopped or not. Uh, fortunately, they were able to not stop it, but to slow it down. And so my doctor uh, went ahead. She had me on steroids for the baby, uh, for him to help develop his lungs a little quicker. And then she also had me on another medication uh, to slow down the contractions. And so I went, went home and I was on bed rest. Um, and, you know, other than that, the contractions kept going, but they were um, not close apart. So everything was pretty much staying, you know, steady. Um, so finally, he was due, I believe my due date with him was July 23rd. Uh, I went to one of my regular weekly doctor's appointments, and my doctor at the time was Jan Bowman. And she decided, because of my quick delivery with Nathaniel, and the fact that I was at home with Lindsay, who had just turned four, she was getting nervous um, because my body was dilating. Um, it was ready to go into uh, labor at any time. Well, I was in labor, but it was ready, getting closer. And so she decided that I needed to meet her on the 14th of July after work at the hospital. And we're just gonna go ahead and, and have this baby that evening. And so we did. Uh, so we got there at the hospital and, um, you know, like I said, it was the, you know, the old hospital here in town. So it took him a while, of course, to find 
uh, a machine, uh, the monitor for the babies that was working correctly. You know, it just took a while for everything. But I did look at the nurse and I did ask her, I said, have you ever delivered a baby before? And she said, yeah, she said one time. I said, okay. And she wanted to know why. I said, well, um, I said, you maybe might be delivering a second one. I said, I tend to have babies quick. So she just kind of laughed, you know, same thing. We didn't think much about it. And so Dr. Bowman, then, you know, she came in, I was all hooked up to the baby monitor and everything, everything was ready to go. All she had to do was break my water, you know, and then that would just naturally get things progressing even more. So she did that. And I can remember Mike and my niece, Whitney, was with us. She was 18 and she was wanting to be a nurse, possibly an OB nurse. So I had invited her to come to see Nathaniel being born. Uh, so she was there. So we just kind of walked the halls, you know, like a lot of women do. And I don't know, I wasn't really paying attention to the time. Um, seven o'clock maybe by the time they got everything. I think I met them there. I met the hospital. I was at the hospital about 5.30, but by the time they got me all ready to go and everything was probably about seven o'clock. And it took a little bit, you know, for those first contractions to hit. Uh, when they did, it was intense. And so I did tell Mike, you know, I, I think I needed to go back in the room and lay down. And it was very, you know, it just, it was very abrupt. That's what the doctor said after Nathaniel was born, that it was a very abrupt labor and, and delivery. And um, so it was basically, it was not a normal uh, labor at that point. It was just one big contraction that just never ended. Oh. <laughs> and the nurse was in the room and she decided uh, that she would give me a shot. Um, well, she was, said we would ask the the doctor and see if she would allow me to have a shot of a narcotic of, a narcotic of some sort just to kind of help uh, with the with the intensity and uh, fortunately dr. Bowman never left the hospital which is unusual you know a lot of doctors <clears throat> when women go in they'll get a, they'll check on them make sure everything's getting started the way it should be and then a lot of times they leave and they will wait till the nurses call them back in. Fortunately, Dr. Bowman never left the hospital. So she said, yes, you know, I could take a shot uh, of this narcotic to kind of help with the pain. Well, when they gave me the shot, um, right at that moment, Nathaniel crowned and was ready to be delivered. Since they gave me a shot right at that moment, he got all of that medication. I did not get it, but it went straight to him. And so what it did was it instantly stopped his heart uh, right then. Of course, I was totally unaware that any of this was happening because uh, the monitors for the baby's heartbeat was behind me, so I couldn't see it. I, had, I was clueless. I did not know that there was a problem. Um, you know, at that point then, it went to more of the normal labor contractions where you actually get a break in between them. Well, Dr. Bowman came flying into the room, which I, I mean, I can remember thinking that was kind of unusual, but really didn't think anything ab about it. You know, and she was right there. <laughs> I do remember Mike just kind of froze and my niece Whitney that was with us she just kind of froze and I can remember thinking um, I need someone to help me <laughs> you know I mean laying down to sitting up and they were just standing there and and I, I even tell Mike today I, I just kept thinking you know what are they doing they're supposed to be helping but whatever I'll do it <laughs> But anyway, you know, like I said, I had no clue that there was a problem, that there was a major problem. I just didn't know. Um, anyway, the doctor came, you know, flying in the room and got right in front of me. She was calm the whole time, never gave me any indication that there was a problem. 
she just was like we just need to get this baby delivered we just need to get him out it's time for him to come out mm -hmm. and I was like okay you know so I just did my thing and and he was born in my first look at Nathaniel he the doctor Dr. Bowman had him his head was in her hand his body was laying up her arm and she was doing CPR on him and taking him over to the little isolate that they put the newborns in. I still, you know, even at that time, I saw it and I can still see that image in my mind, but it still didn't really register with me the significance of it, that he had no heartbeat. He was not breathing. He had no heartbeat. Um, you know, Mike, once again, Mike and Whitney were just kind of standing there. Um, and then obviously at some point, someone in the room uh, pushed the code blue and then people were coming into the nurses, other medical people were flying into the room. And it, it was just a very surreal, but I really didn't know what was going on with him but God was with me. I can remember at one point just saying, I don't even know if I said it out loud or if I just said it in my head, but I was just like, oh Lord, please Lord. That's all I could say. I didn't know what was happening, and, but yet I was very, God kept me subdued. <laughs> you know, he, I think that really was what, um, besides the miracle that Nathaniel survived, they got his heart started again. They got him going. Um, I do know I did not see him that night. I did get to briefly hold him just for a, a second. Mm -hmm. And then they took him to the nursery. Now remind you, we were at the old Marion Hospital. Mm -hmm. There was no NICU. There was no um, special equipment for babies, you know, that had problems um, when they were born. Um, but they were watching him. He was breathing fine. His color was fine. You know, they were just going to watch him and kind of see about his reflexes. Uh, because the doctor told me later, they don't know how long he went without oxygen. You know, because I don't know how long it took for him to actually be delivered. But obviously it took a few minutes, you know, for him to be delivered. Um, and that's the miracle is he's getting ready to turn 22 years old on July 14th and there is absolutely no um, lingering effects of his traumatic entry into this world and I am so blessed and I am so thankful for that to God. That's good. Well thank you for sharing that story Donna. I think that for me the thing that stood out the most was your prayer of you know, a, a short, simple, help me God through this. Mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't have to be one of these flowery, long prayers. Sometimes just help. Yeah, just Lord. Is oh, all Lord. it takes. Yeah. yeah. So th I think that is, is you know, very important. Um, well, thank you for sharing once again. Thank and you. And thank you all for tuning in. And I hope that these stories are edifying for you and giving you hope that God is still uh, in the miracle business and still performs miracles. Miracles don't have to be big. They can be small, simple miracles. Just the fact that we're breathing every day and our hearts beating every day, it can be a simple. But if you have a story that you would like to share, we would love to hear it. Give the, us a call at the church office and we would love to um, get your story down on video to uh, build up this church and, and to strengthen all of our faiths in hearing uh, that story. Thank you very much.